Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and it's Friday, which means we bring to you yet another Obscurity in Literature, and it's a special Friday, it's my birthday Friday, so happy birthday to me, and voila, look at this lovely gift that I got for myself, and the only reason I got it for myself is because I got permission, but anyways, that's a whole different story. Uh, I saw this book, I just stumbled upon it the other day, actually, The Dragon Universe, uh, put out by Ablaze here, and I don't know where it came from. Uh, I know it came from France, which you'll see soon enough, but when I saw that cover, my keen, insightful eyes went, oh, that looks like an Olivier Ledroy artwork, and yeah, it is, obviously. Uh, there is quite the pedigree in this book, and so what's really cool is, when I saw this, I immediately had flashbacks to my childhood. Um... Oh, what was that book called? There was this book I had as a kid. It was like the the Terran Trade Federation books. I want to say uh, Space Wars, Worlds, and Weapons. And it really gave me the same kind of vibe as this. And they both felt the same. Uh, if you've ever seen the Space Wars, Worlds, and Weapons book from very long ago, uh, it took a whole bunch of recycled, albeit really nice artwork, and kind of just framed a lot of sci-fi writing around it that didn't really have anything to do with actual illustrations. None of the illustrations in that book were tied to the text, and that's kind of the same case here. Not as much so. I, I've been flipping through and reading bits and pieces here. Uh, we'll get into the nitty-gritty in just a second. When you see the, the pedigree of artists that are involved in this. So, size-wise... You can see here, using my handy-dandy orc stain that's been read and reread a bajillion times as we wait for a new James Deco artwork. It's a traditional comic book size. You can see it's a bit chunkier, a bit bigger. And in hardcover, that's always a nice addition. Right off the bat, I know the names are in there, but we are greeted to some very nice line work there. If we zoom it in. Zoom! Look at that cross hatching. I get shades of Bernie Wrightson. Those use of blacks and all that lineage. Ooh boy. I know the artist that did the inside did that. Inside cover did the back cover as well. And that one's even more Wrightson ish, in my opinion. Quite nice. And I think with a book like this. Uh, that size really does a wonderful job helping. Yeah, so Jean-Baptiste Monge, Monge, I don't know. I recognize the name. Some of these names, not so much, but that's okay. Uh, as a ignorant American, some of those names are not going to be familiar to me, but I know they are very established artists. Uh, I know that just looking at some of the American names, or maybe not necessarily American names, but Angus McBride, John Howe, Bob Eglinton, those ones jump out, obviously LeDroy, uh, Ashley Woods in there, Tom Kidd's in there, Adrian Smith, Paul Bonner, I mean, we, we've shown off Bonner's work before. Like I said, obviously, a lot of this is going to be older, reused material. I don't think Angus McBride, unfortunately, is going to be coming back from the dead to make new artwork as much as we would like that. Man, that guy did some great stuff. I grew up around Osprey books. William Stout, somebody I'm quite familiar with growing up. Both Kapinskis, both Stefan and Carl. There's somebody else I thought I saw in here that name jumped out at me. Anyway, so we get started with the actual text. Let me zoom down a little bit more here. And some of the stories in here are connected to each other. Some are not. We've got all kinds of nicely little bits and... Yeah, that's totally McBride. You can just... Just the feel of that art. I'm like, yep. When I saw that, I was like, I knew I made a nice choice here getting into the history of dwarves and dragons in the first section. Bit of text. 
I'm like, yeah, that one I knew. I, I, I kind of wonder if a lot of these artists were, like, related to, not related, but involved with, like, Treadvang. Because, I don't know, whenever I see Paul Bonner work with dwarves and worm-type monsters, I always immediately think Treadvang. I want to say that Jean-Paul Monger, if I'm saying that correctly, his stuff is a lot of the line art there. That looks familiar, but I don't know why. Just some really nice pieces. Let me get into a short story here, Elena's Quest. Goes on for a few pages here. Again, really nice looking stuff. And like I said earlier, it really reminds me of... It looks like the dude who did um, did a Peter Pan comic in France. It reminds me of that. I'm like, that's got to be an Ashley Wood picture. My first thought was like Captain Jones, but obviously that's not going to be coming out. Like, just really, really nice pencil work. I mean, everything. Like I said, sure, some of this stuff may be older pieces, repurposed, which I am absolutely okay with. Very Tolkien-esque in its curation, I would argue. Which is funny because I feel that we've kind of moved on from a very Tolkien style of fantasy these days. Another McBride piece. That's another artist I've always associated with Tolkien is McBride. His Middle Earth illustrations besides Osprey. Good old Ledroy. First, I thought these were the same dragons, very similar poses, but they are totally different. So what's interesting is that's the first half we have about dragons running around, and then we get into part two of the book in the second half. And it gets into various species of dragons. And again, the text work interesting, to say the least. Entertaining. Well, you look familiar, my friend. Very French in the application of the art. And I am totally cool with that. And it's gotta be a bonner piece. Yeah, and there's a ton of it. And I'm skipping over tons of it, too. Relatively new, and just as a heads up, uh, there is copious amounts of nudity throughout the book. So, something to keep in mind if you have concerns of young ones viewing said things. What was I going to look for? I was going to find that John Howard. I thought that was a nice piece. What page was that? 56, 57. And then clocking in at almost 200 pages, you got a lot of nice stuff here. I don't know, to me it doesn't even seem like his usual stuff. And that's another artist now I've always kind of associated with the Middle Earth stuff. Looks almost like a early 2000s Korean MMORPG style, which I dig. I always like that look. I don't know, just overall, absolutely gorgeous book. If you enjoy dragons, if you enjoy any of those artists whose names I recognized or possibly mispronounced or didn't go over because there's so many of them involved whose artwork they use for this, uh, definitely worth taking a look. I'll have my Amazon link down below and hopefully uh, I know they also put out a the LeDroy Fairy Book, which is on my immediate must-buy list, so we'll probably see that on this channel very soon as well. I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, but yeah, 
definitely some fun stuff. I'm looking forward to digging into this more, and hopefully all of you out there are going to enjoy it just as much as I do. So, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.